Hey guys, okay, so I'm going to show you guys an interesting video. It's our first draft of our intro for from last year's project. So um, the quality is really bad because it's the only copy I had, but um, hopefully you guys can see how much our project evolved over the time. There are four important elements in boba tea. Authentic tea leaf, real milk, handmade boba, heat. It is actually a matter of professionalism. In China, we say cha zhu fa le, which means if you boil the tea long time and in high temperature, and the tea becomes tired and bitter. I spend a lot of time making the flavor and making it perfect for my boba tea. I know nothing is perfect, but I try my best. So just for reference, I'll show you guys our current version of the intro. There are four factors to boba tea. Boba, authentic tea leaves, real milk, and heat. Balancing all four of these, it is actually a matter of uh, professionalism. In China we say cha zhu fa le. It means if the brewing temperature is too high, the tea becomes too soft. I spend a lot of time making it perfect for my boba tea. I know nothing is perfect, but I try my best. Okay, so there's a lot to analyze uh, between these two intros. So the first point I want to cover is how in this new intro, the video is actually matching what Terry is saying. The dialogue that he's talking about is, doesn't have to be exactly what you show in the video itself. It should just be loosely related it should be complementing what the subject is saying for our first draft it doesn't do that because he's talking about boba tea but we're just showing cars you know he's driving into the place and this makes it way too disconnected for the audience it they focus on the video too much or they focus on the audio too much and the two don't blend together well at all so the second point is that this intro, the new one that we have, um, it basically sets the entire documentary into motion right away. So what I mean by this is you can hear the music coming in between, before this and the music just immediately hits the audience. It makes their heart sink in a way, right? Okay, so the final point I want to talk about is how this intro has a lot of like a sense of mystery to it. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean like, you know, you don't know what's happening. Like, you're giving clues as to what's happening. So it literally says, Eddie prepares the boba. But it's still just not enough information for the, for the audience to just immediately know what's going on. So 
he, we know he's making something, right? But every single clip, like the next one, the audience is kept like engaged because they're they're wondering what the next scene is gonna be. Like we're going through a progression, right? Like he's doing this. Oh, now we're we're, we're wondering like what we're gonna do now. And that happens for every single scene, even when we transition into the next part. Always wondering what we're doing. It's keeping the audience engaged. But this, our first version, the problem with this one is, okay, there's cars. So I guess kind of don't really know what's going on, except this is just context, right? Like it's establishing where we are, I believe, like the sign and stuff. So it doesn't, it doesn't add anything, but it's not bad yet. When it gets really bad is when we get to this car part, we know what's going on. He's going into the store. Like it's pretty obvious. Like even if not, even by this point, like when he's in the car and we just sit here watching this for like 15, 20 seconds. Like literally, like 16 seconds in, the audience is like, oh he's he's gonna go into the store, right? And now we're just gonna sit here for another like minute, just being like, okay, can we get to the next part please? Like, what are you guys trying to say? So the audience is just sitting there, like they're gonna tune out. Nothing's happening because they already knew what's happening since the beginning. But this one is, it's actively trying to, you're, you're, you're basically like trying to challenge your viewer. Like you're giving them just enough clues to like try and piece out what's going on. And like, it's literally in a way, it's like you're just getting straight into the action. And you basically don't want to treat your audience as dumb. Don't make it so vague in a way that doesn't make sense, but don't treat your audience as dumb. They can put these clues together, and if you try to make it too obvious about what's going on, then it's gonna sound pretentious. It's gonna look pretentious. It's just gonna be, no one wants to really listen to this kind of stuff. And I guess what that means is like, it doesn't really mean that we're treating our audience as dumb here, but why do we need a two minute sequence of him just setting up or just walking to the store, right? I think this kind of stuff only really works if he's going to be doing stuff that builds to his character. What I mean is like, maybe he, maybe he does like a task on the way here, like that shows how kind he is or something. That's a good example of using this like wisely in a way that's setting up the character and stuff. but. In this one, he's just walking around. He's in the car and he's walking around. He doesn't do anything. And in a way, we're just, we're wasting time. We're wasting the audience's time. And no one wants to watch this. So like, there's little things like the, in, like the dialogue itself. There's not too much dialogue. It's very concise. He, um, for the original recording, it's like, uh, I believe it's like 15 to 20 seconds long, but we split it over an entire minute. Okay, so, I'm gonna talk about more things in the next meeting. I hope that it'll be in person. I'm sorry if my voice sounds super weird right now. I, I have like a cough and I'm kind of in a library right now, so I can't talk loud. But um, hopefully you guys get a lot more insight out of this, like in terms of how we like plan out things in a documentary. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next meeting. Thank you.